These days I spend most of my time making music with keyboards like these, mini MIDI keyboards. But I have a confession. My first love was guitar. It's the first instrument I taught myself how to play, and I still love adding guitar to my music today. And I was very surprised when I ran this poll. If you had guitars out there collecting dust, or if guitar intrigued you and you wanted to add it to some of your beats. So surprised to see so many of you said yes. So today we're going to look at the very basics of guitar. How do notes work on a guitar? How do we record a guitar into our computer? And how do we make it not sound terrible? Also, I'm a guitar player with no guitar amp, but since I've got a Nova Go Sonic by Enya Guitars, I don't need one. It's got tones and a speaker built right into it. I'm going to tell you more about this guitar later as they are sponsoring today's video. But we've got a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. So we are going to start here with the guitar laid flat on the desk. This is not how you would normally play a guitar, but this visualization I feel like is going to help most people if you're used to a keyboard or if you've never looked at a guitar before. First, I want you to focus on these six vertical lines, the strings on the guitar, and I'm going to strum them with my right hand and this little plastic pick. I'm going to gently pluck each string and hopefully you can hear each of the six strings is a different note and also from the bottom up in this visualization the strings go from low to high. You probably also notice that I can let the strings ring out and I can also stop them by just gently pressing on them. I can do that with either hand. I'm not pressing on this area, I'm just slightly touching the strings so that they stop vibrating. Okay, that's all well and good, but this doesn't sound like music. This sounds just like nonsense, okay? So how do we get music out of this thing? Well, now let's focus on these boxes right here. You might have noticed these sort of divider lines on this, the neck of the guitar. Each of these boxes are actually called frets. And we're essentially gonna use these frets as markers for where to put our fingers on the neck and press down on these individual strings. Let's do this with just one string, this lowest string here. If I strum this string open, it sounds like this. If I take my finger and I press down on the string in this first fret, you notice the tone changes. Let's press a higher fret. We get a higher note. Now, one misconception I've heard from beginners is they don't understand the connection between piano and guitar. And here's something I want you to notice. If I play an E on the piano here, That's the same note as this string, an E. Now, if I use my fret hand again and I press down on the first fret, I get an F. The relationship between an E and an F is a half step. And the relationship between each of these frets is a half step. So I can go from zero, not pressing on the fretboard at all, to this first fret, and we get that half step relationship. Same as the piano. And if I continue up the fretboard with my fret hand, it's the same thing as the piano. These are the exact same notes. Guitar and piano and all musical instruments work off of the same music theory rules. There are exceptions to that with non-Western instruments, but let's focus on this very simple basic concept. The notes you play on the guitar are following the same exact system as the notes you play on the piano. Now we did this all just on one string. And I told you that this string is an E but each of these strings is tuned to a different note. So the next string up is A. Same A as we have here on our piano. And the system works the exact same way. Not pressing any frets. Let's go up one by one. We're going up by half steps all the way up the fretboard. We can go all the way to the end here. 
and that follows through for every single string. That is how the fretboard works. Every fret is a half step relationship on the individual strings. So if we focus in on that concept on a single string and we remember the secret formula, which I discussed in my music theory for beginners video, we know the secret formula for a major scale is whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So now we can easily play a major scale on a single string of the guitar, starting from open, no fret, whole step, whole step, half, whole step, whole, whole, half. We get the major scale. Did you notice the whole steps and the half steps? Same exact thing as playing this on a piano. If you know that each fret is a half step relationship, now you can find whole steps. Combine them with half steps and have an understanding of how to play basic scales. Now we've been thinking very linearly up the frets on a single string, but we have to acknowledge that the guitar has six strings and we have to start going from thinking linearly to multi-dimensionally, I guess, because combining the different strings on the guitar is how we get different tonal harmonies, where if I play on a piano, multiple keys that come together to create a certain harmony, I can do the same exact thing on a guitar, but using multiple strings. So an example of this would be playing the low E string on the third fret and playing the next string up the A string on the fifth fret. These are fifth relationship. And if I play them together, we get that very distinct fifth sound. Same thing here on the piano. Same exact notes, a G and a D. You're thinking, well, Tatro, what are you talking about? You said this was the E string and this was the A string. How did you get G and D? Remember, as we press down these strings on different frets, we are changing the note of the string. So count this with me here and you can even follow along on the keyboard. If the open string is tuned to E, one half step up from E is F. Another half step up, F sharp. Another half step up, G. And then you can follow that same logic on the A string to know that if we play on the fifth fret on an A string, we get a D because this is the fifth fret on the A string and A to D is one, two, three, four, five semitones or half steps, remember our frets are half steps, from A. A to D, five half steps, follow that on the guitar, one, two, three, four, five. Now we get that very distinct fifth sound. This is actually the beginning of a very simple type of chord that we play on a guitar called a power chord. A power chord uses a root note, let's say G, the fifth D, just like we've already been playing, and then an octave of the root note on top, G. So we have G on the bottom, G on the top, and a fifth in the middle. Ergonomically, this is very easy to play on the guitar because we've already seen the shape between the root note and the fifth. And we can add the octave on top on the next string up, the D string, which will also, in this instance, live on the fifth fret in the instance of this G power chord. What I don't want you to get caught up in at this moment is the specific, oh, like that, that's how I play a G power chord. Don't get caught up in that specific letter. So focus on the shapes here. Start on the E string and pick any fret. 
you say seventh fret. Now we know we're gonna add a note on the next string. So skip a fret, so there's one fret in between, and then place your finger down there on the A string. And right next to that on the next string up, place another finger. Same fret, different string. This shape right here can be used up and down the fretboard to create a power chord. Whatever note you choose as your root, it's that power chord. So you could have a G chord or you could have an A chord and so on. Another cool thing about this power chord shape is it not only works starting from the low E string, but you can also jump your fingers up one string and start with the root note on the A string and the same shape works in this position as well. Here's a common chord that's a lot more complicated than the power chord. Let's do G. This chord uses all four of your fingers and also you have to make sure that the strings you're not pressing down are open so they can ring out in the chord as well. Something you will definitely get used to playing but you can see that chords get a lot more complicated than just three simple notes in a simple shape. Now this is all made possible because these strings here we talked about before they're not just tuned randomly, they're tuned in a very specific standard tuning. E, A, D, G, B, E. You don't need to commit that to memory right now, that's something you will have memorized after one week of playing guitar. Each of these notes are tuned to a distinct note so that we can easily make certain shapes with our hand on the fretboard to create different chords. Some chords are easy, like the power chord shape I just showed you. Other chords are more complex and require more fingers and will require a bit more practice to get the comfortable ergonomics to be able to play. But hopefully you notice that we can use single strings to create single line melodies, or we can combine strings to make chords and play chord progressions. One really awesome thing about how we just talked about the guitar is that with piano, you have to learn a very fancy form of notation to be able to learn how to play piano most of the time. Where the notes fit on the staff, what's a sharp, what's a flat, all that good stuff. Guitar has a much simpler form of notation called tabs. And if I show you one right here, hopefully you can quickly identify that what we're looking at in this diagram here is the same exact thing as the guitar that we've been looking at. You have six strings from the bottom bottom up, E, A, D, G, B, E. And if you can take a guess at what those numbers mean, many of you might have already guessed that they represent the frets. So if you see, we have numbers on specific strings and those numbers are in order, which represent the order we need to play the notes in. So for this tab, for instance, we have A string, everything's on the A string. Then we have two, 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 four, five. Let's play that sequence here. Two, two, two. Just like that. Second fret, fourth fret, fifth fret. And then the rest of the line, five, five, four, two, two. Four, two, two. Very, very simple, very easy. Now this next one is from a popular rock song. I'm gonna play it very slowly here to demo, but this is an example of a tab that uses multiple strings, not everything on a single string. So even though the numbers jump to different strings, we still need to play them in left to right order, just like you would read a book. So we have zero E followed by seven, followed by five up a string. So we have zero on E, seventh fret on the next string up, fifth fret on the next string up, five. Back down to the E string, six, five, seven. You play that with the right rhythm, you're gonna hear a very recognizable rock song. Very hard for me to play it with the guitar laying down like this. Close enough. So hopefully now you have a basic understanding of how notes work on a guitar. I wanna jump into the tech side of things and talk about how you would record a guitar in your home studio. So I'm gonna assume most of you are recording at home and possibly don't even have a guitar amp. In that case, we're gonna record the guitar directly into the computer via a box like this, an audio interface. 
This allows you to plug the guitar into this box and this interface connects to your computer via USB-C and it becomes your audio device in your DAW. You'll of course need an instrument cable which goes from the output of your guitar into the interface. On the interface you can set your levels, usually there's a headphone jack on the interface as well or it connects to speakers and this becomes like the hub for all the audio that you'll record into your computer. Now this guitar I've been using actually we don't even need an interface or a quarter inch cable, this guitar can connect to my computer completely through USB-C. So before we get into more of the technical stuff, let me tell you a little bit more about the Enya Novago Sonic, the sponsor for today's video. The Novago Sonic has been a great addition to my collection because I don't actually own a guitar amp. Usually I record everything direct in. But what about when I want to just jam or something like that? This guitar actually has a built-in speaker and built-in tones so I can change the tone of my guitar right from the guitar itself. So I've had a lot of fun just jamming around the house, but also I've recorded to like my tape recorders, which is really fun because I don't have to run any external gear. I've already got a guitar sound, not just a dry, boring sound on the Novago Sonic. Also being able to connect via USB is very convenient. I don't have to use an audio interface at all if I'm connecting to my computer. And also the app is very convenient where I can just change the tones that are saved here on the guitar in real time. It's also made out of carbon fiber, so I don't have to be too delicate and I don't have to worry about it too much when taking it out on the go. So I thought they'd be a great sponsor for this video, especially if there's a lot of beginners out there. You don't want to go and buy a whole amp. You want to get a guitar that you can sit and jam with no matter where you are. Plug in some headphones or just play out through the speaker. You're not tethered to anything. So if you are interested in learning more about the Novago Sonic or any of the other guitars by any guitar, go check out the link in the description down below. And I want to thank Any Guitars once more for supporting the channel. Now back to the video. All right, let's really get set up for recording now. I use Ableton Live, but a lot of what we're going to talk about now is applicable to every DAW. In my DAW's preferences, I need to select an audio input device. Earlier, I mentioned audio interfaces. So if you got one of those, we're going to look for that. Uh, but I did also mention that this guitar is connected via USB-C. So I can select this guitar as my audio input device right here. You'll notice that I have a different output device. That's my audio interface, which I'm listening to my DAW on. So you can have these be separate. Just make sure you don't end up in a weird feedback situation. All right, so now that we've got that set in preferences, I've got track two here, the track I wanna use for my guitar, gonna make sure it's armed, and then I'm gonna double check the input to make sure that when I play my guitar, the sound is coming in. So I can see that inputs one and two here, a stereo input are coming through for the guitar, and just like that, we are playing guitar through the computer, and we're ready to record into the DAW. But I'm willing to bet a lot of you out there don't have a USB-C guitar, so let me connect via a quarter inch instrument cable like we talked about earlier so that we have a similar experience. Connect the instrument cable to the guitar. I'm actually gonna just unplug my USB-C cable for now. Just do this the old fashioned way. Back to my DAW's preferences, select my audio interface as the input. Now, if we double check our inputs on my audio interface, I should be able to find where the guitar is coming in from. Now, usually guitars are coming in on a mono input if we're plugged in this direct way. So it looks like input one. That's where my guitar is coming in from. Great, we've got audio routed into the DAW. Quick disclaimer here, we're talking about recording directly into a computer. You can mic a guitar amp, and also for acoustic guitars that don't have audio jacks, you have to mic them. We're just not covering that today because that's a little more complicated. This is the simplest form of recording a guitar directly in. Two major problems that people run into at this stage is one, the audio gets like these weird crackles in it. That can be caused by buffer issues. If you look in my preferences here again, my buffer size is set to 128 samples, but it can go all the way down to 32 samples. If you set this too low, let's see if we can break it here for a minute. I can't, my machine is too good. But if you go too low, most machines can't get that low of a buffer size. So you wanna raise this until you stop hearing crackles. The second issue is directly related, and that is the issue of latency, meaning that you play a note on the guitar, and when it comes through the DAW, it's late. So if I turn the buffer size all the way up to two, 2,048 samples, 
-hmm. The time between me playing that note and the note coming through the DAW is way too long, 49.8 milliseconds. So if you've got latency, you want to lower this. And the magic is finding a number where you don't get crackles, you're not overloading your machine with a low buffer size, and you're not getting latency that's causing too much issues with you playing in real time. Some audio interfaces come with direct monitoring, meaning you can hear the guitar before it gets processed by the computer, which means you won't have any latency. There's pros and cons to that. If you're adding effects in your DAW, you won't be able to hear those in real time, but you will be able to play in real time. It's more like an alternative for those of you that don't have a powerful enough computer to get the latency low enough to be playable. But in an ideal situation, we can get the buffer size to a point where we get no crackles and also we get no latency. Check your audio interfaces native drivers for your computer to get the best results. So my guitar has cool effects built into it that I can change with the mobile app. But let's pretend you don't have a fancy guitar like me, and I'm just going to turn this function off. And when you plug your guitar in, it just sounds more like this. Just kind of dry. It doesn't really sound like the guitars you're used to hearing in recorded music, right? That's because we need to do a little processing. I'll talk about a plugin in a minute, but here in Ableton Live and other dolls have this as well, you can find the built-in guitar effects. Specifically, Ableton has things called amp, which is emulating a guitar amp. Alrighty, we're sounding a little better. And then there's cab, which is usually the speaker that goes with an amp. If you ever have seen a rock concert or a rock guitarist, they usually have the head, that's the amp part, and then they have the cab, which is like the speakers. So if we combine those, we get a very good sounding or very clean sounding guitar sound. Let's turn those off again. Just dry, nothing. Put amp and cab on here. Wow, it's starting to sound like a normal guitar. And of course, these devices have different presets to them. You can assume if we check the heavy box here, we're gonna get a very heavy. Too heavy, too heavy. Switch to lead, more for melodic lines. And you can hear that each of these just has a different tone to them. And if you know anything about EQ, you already know what bass, middle, and treble is. So you can start to get the kind of sound you want, whether you want a more trebly sound or more rounded out sound. Now that's just using what's built into my DAW. I'm gonna get rid of those for a minute though and tell you the plugin that I love to use for guitar actually, which is called Guitar Rig by Native Instruments. And Guitar Rig does exactly what that amp and cab situation does, except it's a lot more curated of a list with more effects going on. So we can get something closer to some of the songs that we love. Click on Country Delight. Nice little country vibe, that slapback reverb. But as you can see in Guitar Rig here, it's combining a lot of devices into this single preset, taking a lot of the work out for us. If I go to Lo-Fi Dreaming, what is this? Some of the effects are quite out there. This has got some like reverse delays and things like that. Try Shimmer Eyes here. Too much, too much. Stadium solo lead. I'm not gonna do a full review of this plugin here, but if you're looking for quick presets, very well-crafted presets, I'll say, to get different styles of music from your guitar, Guitar Rig is a quick and easy source for that. All right, switching back to the simple amp and cab again. That just sounds pretty good. And I wanna show you a couple basic recording techniques for guitar now. And I didn't mention this before, but tuner. Ableton Live has a tuner, which if your guitar is not in tune, you're pretty much gonna sound bad anyway. So it doesn't matter how many effects you apply to your guitar, tune it first. Your guitar will fall out of tune over time, so it's something you periodically need to check in on. Let's quickly record an easy guitar line.
All right, very basic chord progression here. Doesn't sound all that bad, but the one thing that I think can improve guitar recordings a lot is something called subtractive EQ. This is something you wanna approach with caution and not overdo, but can really help your guitar sound not so boxy. So I've loaded up EQ8 here, and what I'm going to do is we're gonna to listen to this guitar on loop, actually. And we're gonna find some mid-range frequencies and try to listen to them. I'm gonna use the second band here, but turn the Q up. That way we're getting a nice, tight, focused frequency. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scan through and try to find harsh frequencies that don't sound very good. And I've lifted this all the way up, so those frequencies are gonna be really loud. I'm doing that to find them, and then we're gonna pull them way down. So let's give it a listen. Kind of like a resonant squeaky thing happening there. So now that I found that frequency, I'm gonna pull it straight down. It has a very subtle effect on the whole sound, but as we start to stack these, like I'll do this with another EQ band now, with band six, I'll start to scan for another not so great frequency. Something there. Now we wanna make sure we're not pulling out like actual frequencies from the chord. Like we don't wanna pull out our notes. Those notes are gonna be jumping up in the EQ. We don't wanna to lose tone. What we wanna lose are frequencies that make our sound boxy. But if you go through and do this process a few times, make sure you're sort of A, B testing it and that you're not pulling out any important frequencies. You're really just looking for irritating frequencies that might muddy up your sound. Let's pull that frequency out. And I think I need a few more EQ points here, but there is a subtle difference, especially in the mix in the context of a full song, where a lot of those mid-range frequencies interfere with all the other parts of your song and it starts to just have an effect on your overall mix, a negative effect. So subtractive EQ, pull out harsh frequencies that don't sound so great. And also, just to bookend this part here, sweep out some of those low frequencies because you probably have a bass in your song that's taking care of all the low stuff. So just tame the lows on the guitar. Okay, the second technique here that is used on a lot of guitar recordings that you listen to, I can guarantee it, is double tracking. So we've got this one line of guitar here. I'm gonna duplicate this track, delete the audio off of it, and we're gonna just record this guitar line again. Let's go ahead and record on top. I'm gonna turn off the original and record the exact same line again. Now I didn't record that perfectly the same, but let's hear what they sound like together. There's almost like a chorusy effect happening here, and that's literally what chorus is anyway. So this doubling is going to kind of have that effect, but we need to take a couple more steps to get a big, thick, wide sound. The first thing I'm going to do is take the original and pan it all the way to the left. This double track that I just did, I'm going to pan it all the way to the right, and it looks like the double track is a little softer. I want these to be around the same level, so I'm just going to bring the level up so the waveforms look about the same. The fact that these two guitar takes are not exactly Exactly the same is the magic here. If I just copy and pasted this and did the same thing I'm about to do, it wouldn't sound the same. We want those subtle differences. So now let's give it a listen. A nice and thick guitar sound. Remember, we started with just this which is useful. Sometimes you just need a single guitar line, that's fine. Other times when guitar is part of a larger ensemble, especially in big rock songs too, you want these large levels of guitar. So what I'm gonna do is group these tracks together and now I can treat them as one volume wise.
and I can start to hear a few more frequencies in there. So I could go and do some subtractive EQ once again. I hear a bit of a high frequency in there. Yeah, it's somewhere there, right around there. Just a little bit of an irritating frequency that I can just bring down. Another example of that subtractive EQ helping us out. I think there's a little bit of a peak here around this frequency range. Let's see if we can pinpoint that. And also you can solo these frequencies with this little headphone button here. So when you click on one, we're hearing just that frequency. Oh, hear that? Let's get rid of that. So those two tips, do a little bit of fine tuning with your EQ and some subtractive EQ at very pinpointed frequencies that sound bad or boxy and double track, panning one track to the left and one track to the right. Two unique recordings coming together to make one super wide, nice guitar ensemble sound. Of course, these are just the basics of a guitar. You should go take a real guitar lesson now, but hopefully after watching this, you feel confident in doing that. So if you've got a guitar collecting dust somewhere in a corner and this video inspired you to pick that up, please let me know in the comments. It helps me out a lot. Also, don't forget to check out today's sponsor. If you are looking to pick up maybe your first guitar, you don't want to buy an amp, you want control via the app, all that good stuff. It's available on this, the Enya Novasonic Go. Very good beginner guitar, I would say. And it's made out of a carbon fiber, so it's not too fragile. You don't have to be too delicate with it. That's going to be it for now. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Tatro. Have a good one.